alive. So. Good morning, Anthony Williams, and thank you so much for being here and joining us this morning. I know there was a lot of excitement that um, Ricky was on the show. So, um, uh, you know, he's so famous um, across the country, and uh, he has been the number one REMAX agent in Baldwin County since 2014. And uh, that's a big deal because there are a lot of fantastic agents in Baldwin County. And uh, we just welcome you, Ricky. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, and uh, Gusty, thank you for being here as well. Uh, appreciate it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, Ricky, um, tell us about you know how long you've been. Um, I know a little bit about your story, but some people may not know, um, you know, your, your background in real estate. Well, I got in real estate when I was 20. It was 17 years ago. And uh, it's been a roller coaster. Went through, uh, you know, the the boom where, uh, you know, prices doubled in two years, made a lot of money, lost everything in the crash, you know, went back to zero, bankrupt, sleeping on friends' couches and uh, kind of built my way back from that, you know. And so it's it's been a roller coaster. But through it all, um, you know, like a lot of people ask me what I would go back and tell my younger self. And my answer is the same every time. I would literally not tell myself anything back then <laughs> because I wouldn't want to alter the lessons that I learned and everything I went through. Because there were people that were like, you know, 50. There were people in their 40s and 50s and even 60s that were right next to me going through the same thing in their life as I was when I was in my mid 20s. And really, even at the time, I knew it was a blessing that I was learning all these lessons you know, at that time in my life, instead of 40, 50 and 60, like the other guys I was watching. Right. And uh, it ended up being true, you know, so I've always been really good, not the greatest, but I've, I've been OK, I guess, above average of being able to kind of figure out, OK, this happened. So if I do this, then this is going to happen, you know, and kind of predicting the future, if you will, you know, in, in a way. So there were a lot of little things in my life that, um, that I was able to figure one thing out and then apply that and say, OK, if this happens, then this is what is going to happen over the next five, 10 years. It was like when I became the number one agent for REMAX in the state in 2008 and nine, when there were so many foreclosures in the area, um, there were these foreclosure agents that got all the listings. They, they, they got in with the banks and they got all the listings. No other agents could get the foreclosure listings. And all these other agents were envious of those agents because they were getting all the listings. You know, they were making, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 a month. They didn't have to, they seemingly didn't have to do anything. You know, they were just taking orders from the banks. But I found a flaw with those agents. And that was that they didn't answer their phone ever. Right. And <laughs> so I could never get any of those agents on the phone and they knew they didn't have to answer the phone because they were getting so many listings at the time. They didn't really care. They were just more concerned with if the bank called, they were going to answer. But as far as us agents, they weren't worried about it because they knew it was going to sell. Right. And most so, of those people have profiles that are not people oriented. They're paperwork oriented. Right. So, right. I mean, it makes sense. But I sat back. Well, it looks like his um, internet may I have- I can watch those. Am I back? Yeah, you are. <laughs> so I was looking at those agents and I was realizing what was going on. And I was like, I want to be one of those agents. So I looked into it and I realized I don't want to do all that. That seems like a lot of work for not as much. Like, it seems like way more than than I really want to do for the, for the results. So- um, I said, you know what, I'm going to represent the buyers on these foreclosures and I'm going to I'm going to sell as many as I can representing the buyers. And I know what's going to happen in five years. These buyers are going to come back to me to relist the property and upgrade to another property and refer 10 people to me over the next five to 10 years. And the foreclosure and I'll be number one in the area and all the foreclosure agents will be gone. Well, and that's that's literally what happened. Like all the foreclosure agents that were getting all those listings. I haven't heard from them since. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And that's how it works. And whenever we do start experiencing a downturn, they'll be back. 
Um, but that was a really smart strategy for you. And what a blessing in your 20s to have to go through that because so early on, um, having that lesson down, you've learned so much from that. I'm sure you probably are a saver and you put things away and you prepare a little bit more. Um, that's huge. Probably the best of both worlds. Like I make 10 times more money and I save 10 times more money. You know what I'm saying? I'm the best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Gusty, um, if you want to ask yep. a couple of questions, I need to do something really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. All right. So, um, you know, one of the things that I know I get asked and you probably get asked a lot is um, successful people typically have a morning routine. Mm. So what is your morning routine? Well, and it's a moving target. You know, I uh, I'm always tweaking it, you know, but probably for the last maybe eight or nine months, I really kind of got into this, this routine that I'm in now. And I, you know, I'm always tweaking it to try to figure out, to try to make it a little better. And uh, so I get up at four 30 and I work for an hour. As soon as I get up, I go straight to my phone or the computer and I work for an hour. Um, then I go to the gym for an hour. Then I come home, eat breakfast, get ready for work. I'm at the office by eight. And then I have a little 15 minute meeting with myself to try to prioritize my day and make sure I know everything I need to know. Then I have a little meeting with my assistant and then it's off to the races, you know, right. um, that's pretty much my morning routine. And, you know, with the reason I started the four thirty, is literally I needed an extra hour per day. I, I had to like fit it in there somewhere because I answer every single DM on Instagram. And so like it got like I'm getting hundreds a day now and it takes me a good hour or so to really get through them all. And I, I, I'm too busy selling properties and trying to run my business to really do that during the day. So I was like, where can I fit an extra hour in? Because I have to answer the DMs because it's people that are crying and like desperate for help, you know, and if right. I turn my back on these people, then I'm not like, what am I doing? I'm not doing any you know, I'm not doing the industry any good, really. I mean, a little bit, but I want to maximize, you know, I want to make sure that I'm really helping people, not just putting content out there and then ignoring people when they really need help. You know what I mean? Right. You sure. ask for people to reach you. So you have to be available. And um, the same thing with any business, I think real estate, you know, any sales, any business at all. You know, if, if people are reaching out to you, asking questions and needing help, and wondering what the property's worth or do they want to, you know, if you're not staying on top of those inquiries and in in that engagement, you're losing so much, especially in today's world, you know, where it's all about engagement. It's all about social media. It's all about brand. It's all about service. It's all about giving, you know, you have to do that. Yeah. So that was the reason I chose to start getting up at 430. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Jenny, I want to ask you, what is your morning routine? Do you have you do you have a set morning routine? OK, mine is off track a little bit just because I have been with um, this new doctor. Who <laughs> and so I've been sleeping a little bit more than normally. But normally I get up at 5 a.m. and I'll run for a mile and a half to two miles somewhere in there. Um, probably mostly a mile and a half. <laughs> And that at least gets me started. And then I answer just the same as Ricky. I answer all those agents who know I get up early and they're constantly, you know, needing support and encouragement and uh, before my day gets started. And um, then I get ready to tackle the, the, the rest of the day. So to yep. me, getting up early just puts you ahead of the game. Um, and uh, on the days that um, I have uh, slept late, it just, I feel so behind and I feel unproductive. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. So I get up at 515 every morning. I know Ricky and I have actually traded direct messages that early, if not earlier. And um, and so, you know, my game plan is I need 45 minutes just to have me time. And I got two young kids. I know, Ricky, you got one on the way. Um, so I need my me time and my coffee time. And then, you know, so I check on my emails and, and I just kind of finalize my game plan for the day. And then 6 a.m. is usually when the kids are, are going. So I, I'm, I'm on dad duty for an hour, take them, drop them off at the daycare. And then I get back home and I'm either doing a jog like this morning. I, I jog two and a half miles. 
and um, or I'm doing a workout here. I'm doing a workout at the gym. So, you know, I, I've um, you know, a lot of people know that I've lost about 60 pounds over the last couple of years. And I've just said, all right, I've got to have physical fitness as a very important piece of my uh, day. And it helps me get through the day. And Ricky talked about working out for an hour and, um, and I just, it's, it's a vital piece of my morning and I just can't let it go. And if I do let it go, then, then my day really is kind of shot. Well, and we are usually um, up early and that's where you and I kind of plan our days together. Hey, what is your plan for today? What is my game plan for today? And I think that helps them much. So Ricky, I know like when you're trying to find extra time, the only thing you can do, is <laughs> find it earlier in your day. Um, yeah, yeah, you, for sure. You are famous for what is called circle prospecting. Mm -hmm. And um, can you share, like, what the definition, what is that, and uh, how do you work that? Well, um, sure. So, like, I built my entire business on circle prospecting. Um, I didn't have I, – I tried everything. But at the end of the day, I realized I'm really good at figuring out what's most efficient uh, and what's most effective. And that was what I kind of settled into. Now, I'm a big believer in everything work. And I think I think the biggest reason why a lot of people know who I am is because of the philosophy behind what I do, which is you got to put the relationship first over the deal, you know. But But the circle prospecting is literally – um, you pick a neighborhood, any neighborhood, and you just call the owners and you say, hey, how are you doing today? Cool. I'm enjoying the weather. Isn't it great? I don't want to take up too much of your time, but a house around the corner sold. Didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you today. You're literally asking people what you can do to help them instead of have you thought about selling? You know, who do you know that might want to sell? You know, what if I could get you the price? You, you know, what if I could sell it for this? And, and Instead of trying to like jab at them to try to get them to do something, you literally flip it into, I don't care what you don't want to do. I want to know what I can do to help you. You know what I mean? And then you, and then you listen to what they have going on and then you help them create a game plan around what they have going on. If they're trying to, if they're thinking about doing something in six months, it's like, okay, cool. Why? You know, why are you selling in six months? Let's figure out what the bigger reasons are. Oh, my kid is going to graduate from high school and then go to college and we're going to do this and that. Oh, great. That's incredible. Tell me about your house. And then when you start to realize why people are buying and selling, this is the biggest question ever for prospects. You know, it's finding out the deeper reasons behind. They're not just going to buy or sell something for the fun of it. Right. No kidding. <laughs> I mean, I mean, even if it's an investment, it's still an investment for a reason. You know, I mean, there's always a bigger reason behind the purchase or the sale. So finding that out is so key. And from there, then now we can really separate ourselves from all the other agents, because now we're caring about their bigger reason versus just trying to sell a house. You know what I mean? Which is what most agents, that's their target is just to do the deal, get it sold, they're not even listening to they're not they then that it's so crazy because the prospect may have even told the agent why they're selling but the pros but the agent didn't even listen because that's not even what that they're so blinded by the fact of the deal they're not even really listening to the reason behind it so circle prospecting is unlimited it's a it's an unlimited resource because you can't call all the property owners in your area ever in your life Right. And if you did somehow, which would never happen, but let's just say you did, let's start over and call them all again because, you know, what I'm saying 60 percent of those properties have changed hands. People change their minds overnight. Like it's so unlimited. It's such an unlimited, untapped resource. Right. Because agents don't really do this. They're calling the for, they're calling the for sale by owners. They're calling the expireds. Mm -hmm. You know, you call the expired and the guy says the seller says, well, you're the 10th agent that called me. Leave me alone. Of course, I know how to break through that, but the thing is, it's like those people are getting hammered. Let's go back door on the market. Let's go back door and let's call people that agents aren't calling that own the type of property we want to sell and see what we can do to help them. Oh, Ricky, that's not now business. I need money, money now. I have agents across the country, like you said, that get listings their first week, their first month. I have a guy that got in real estate. 
he he started you know doing this just circle prospecting sold 106 properties as a single agent in his first year in Mississippi. Wow. He just finished, wow. He just finished his first year and he sold 106 properties, just circle prospecting. That's fantastic. Where in Mississippi? That's where I'm from. What's that? Where in Mississippi? His name is Quintavious Burdett and he played football at Ole Miss. Okay. And to be honest with you, I don't know exactly what town. I don't know if he, I think he's around, uh, um, what, where's Old Miss? In Oxford. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's around there somewhere. Okay, yeah, I think I remember you posting something about him in your group. Yeah, Quintavious Burdett, man, look him up and give him a ring if you're close by because that's a guy you want to network with. He has it. I'll tell you what was really cool about my interview with him um, that 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 the viewers can really use is he has this. He he's a football player. Like he played at Ole Miss. He was a player. And he tried to go to the NFL, and that didn't work out for him. He had some injuries and, and all this and that. But he has this four-point system, whereas every day he has to get four points. Once he gets his four points, he can call it a day right then if he wants to, or he can keep going and get more points if he wants to, but he starts over at zero every day. And so what are, what are the points? Well, a half a point is, is you just met somebody you never met before. Right. So if you meet eight people, that's four points. OK, so worst case scenario, you know, you can go meet eight people you never talked to before. Right. That's just worst case scenario. Right. One point is showing property or going to a listing appointment, regardless if you get it. If you show property or go to a listing appointment, that's one point. Yeah, that's produ productivity. OK, two points is a signed listing. And a signed contract, like an accepted purchase agreement is four points. So if you get a deal, that's four points. Now, everything else from that point on, you're working when you don't have to. You know how good that feels? And like, <laughs> It feels great. I created um, a system just like that. It's a 100-point system, that, mm -hmm. but it allows you to play that game with yourself so that you can be accountable to yourself because you know, <laughs> and for the past 10 years, I've been working with agents, and you can't make people do anything. They have to be hungry to do it themselves. And that's a great way to, to stay accountable to yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Ricky, we've got a question here. JC Young, how are you? She said, what did he say when he first called Circle Prospects? She couldn't write fast enough. Do what now? She asked you, um, what did you say when you first called oh. Circle Prospects? Oh, okay, yeah. So, like, when I call him up, like, first off, like, the first impression, as in the very first word you say like it, it's all about the tone and the body language and the speed of the voice, you know, because a lot of people are, are so concerned on what to say, but they fail to to realize it's it has a lot to do with what you say, but also how you say it and how you're and how you're presenting yourself to these people. Because the thing is, is that, you know, some people make calls and don't have really good results and they're saying, oh, this doesn't work. Well, you know, you made you made 500 calls. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it took me like thousands and thousands and thousands of calls to get to where I was comfortable. And then another thousands and thousands and thousands to get to where I was actually in the groove. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but what I say is, as they say, hello, I say, hey, Mr. Johnson. Hey, Mr. Johnson, it's Ricky Carruth, Remax of Orange Beach. How are you doing today? And it's like, how are you doing today? You know what I mean? Like, I really want to know. <laughs> How are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to really figure out how they're doing. And, like, it's real. Like, it's authentic. It's genuine. The intent is there not to try to sell, but to literally help. And so, like, the, I'm telling you, it's the tone that you use, which is what is what matters. But from there, it's like, they're like, oh, I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing good, too. I'm just enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? See, I'm throwing them off with a little bit of non salesy I'm throwing them off with a question. And that can be, like, you getting ready for Christmas? How was your Thanksgiving? What about them saints? Like it could be anything, but it has to be kind of a statement and a question. It has to be really quick. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Or, you know, trying to stay dry and it nasty out there. Like whatever the case may be, it needs to kind of roll off the tongue. And they're like, oh, man, I get into so many conversations about the weather that like take up five minutes. <laughs> it, I mean, it's nuts, man, because everybody can relate to the weather. That's true. Uh, you know, and then. Next thing you know, it's like when that comes to an awkward point, now here comes our transition. OK, Th this is the transition. You got to be ready for this because this is what makes the makes the phone call go smooth 
and keeps the conversation going in a, in a positive way. And there's no awkwardness because when you get down talking about the weather, it's like, oh, I got ro- roped into this weather conversation. Now what are we doing? And so it's like, <laughs> well, cool, man. Look, I don't want to take up too much of your time. That's the transition statement right there. But when it comes to the awkward point in the call, it's like, it's like, well, cool, man. I got you. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time. That's the transition point you have to nail. But a house around the corner from you sold recently, and I didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you today. Boom. And you've got an agent, Gail Ward. Good morning, Gail. Thanks for doing this. Um, he already has it all down for you from listening to you in the past. So that's fantastic. And Vicki, be safe on your way to Waco. Glad that you're joining us this morning. Um, so if you have a question for Ricky, please just type it in the comments and uh, I'll be able to, to ask him anything that you want to ask him. He's got a wealth of knowledge, but you also have an event coming up, right? And yeah. so if you're in Birmingham, people will be able to see you soon, right? Absolutely. Monday, Monday, I'm doing an all day workshop with uh, coach Michael Burt. Um, it's going to be at the Southern and uh, you get six hours of CE credits. And we're running a special on that event for $99. So lunch is included. It's an all-day event, Q&A, uh, me and Coach Michael Burt. Like what, I mean, all, I mean, like everybody's dreams are coming true right now. <laughs> <laughs> like to, to go to that, it's really All simple. the dreams. Yeah, every dream in the world. So <laughs> to go to that, it's really simple. You just go to coachburt.com backslash caruth. Coachburt.com backslash caruth. And then when you check out, use the coupon code Alabama to get it from two ninety nine to ninety nine. Wow, that's a huge discount. Yeah, the, Frankie is asking, where is it again? Where is that located? It's at it's at this restaurant in Birmingham called the Southern. It's a, it's an uptown downtown Birmingham by the BJCC. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And now, um, Faith Harper. Hey, Faith, how are you? Um, she has a question. She mm-hmm. says that, and she wants to know what's your why behind everything that you do. I think, I think, really, it's the, just the fact that, like, I know that I can do it. Like, I, I know what my full potential is, which is to be like, you know, the biggest guy in the world. As far as I, I don't know. Like, I just know what's inside of me, and if I don't pursue it then I won't be able to sleep at night. You know what I mean? Like I have to, I have to reach my full potential, which I don't know exactly what my full potential is. Nobody knows what their full potential is until they do it, until they put forth the effort for five years, 10 years, 20 years. They, they don't, you don't know what you're capable of over the long term until you put that daily action in to the fullest for, you know, over a long period of time. And so I don't know what, where, where I'm going to end up. I just know it's somewhere really crazy. And I know that if I don't pursue it as hard as I can, then I'm not I'm not doing myself any justice. I'm not doing you guys any justice. And I'm just to me, I just I don't know. To be honest, it's just like, what else would I be doing? (laughs) Like, I really don't know what else I would do, to be honest with you. Well, it sounds like. um, uh Oh, thank you, Faith. Um, it sounds like uh, you know that you are passionate about something, so you might as well give it your all. Exactly. Okay. So, um, that and that's an excellent why. Wow. That's um, I feel like that's what we're all here for. If we're going to do something, we might as well do it all the way. And There's nothing in my brain. Like I get endorphins released uh, from putting in effort. Like the yeah. amount of effort and- that I put in is actually what makes me happy. Well, and, and but it also makes you proud. It makes you feel accomplished. It makes you feel like you have helped people. You've served people for the day. Um, so I think you said the key word a, a little bit ago, and that was the daily action that you put into everything. And uh, we can talk about all kinds of strategies and fun stuff and different ways to prospect. But if you're not taking that daily action, you're not going to get anywhere. And yeah. uh, you're not going to have that Um feeling of accomplishment or having served anyone. So um, Faith wants to know, um, uh, okay, wait, uh, Michael first says, I'm thinking about hiring an assistant. What are some tasks that your assistant helps you with, Ricky? Um, So when I hired my assistant, I was, uh, you know, I'm a single agent now, just one assistant. And I, um, when I hired my assistant, um, I was up to 30 active listings. Um. So, um, you know, w- when I got the 30 active listings at that point, 
just the processing of the listings and then setting up all the agents that wanted to show my listings was like monstrous. It took, it was taking up my whole day, just like taking calls from agents that wanted to show my listings and then helping them get in there and all that stuff. And I, and it took, like, I, it was driving me crazy. It was like, you know, this is not making me money. Like it does. Cause I have to get this stuff done and pe people have to look at these properties, but if I'm not on the phone and I'm not trying to get more deals going on in my pipeline, then, then I'm going to end up running dry here. Like I like, so you, I think, I think it's different for everybody. I, it was 30 listings for me. It may be five listings for another agent or 40. Like, I don't know where, you know, at the end of the day, business is completely unlimited, which, okay, there's only so many transactions and all that. But the thing is, is, there's more than any one person can ever handle. There's more than any company can ever handle. There's more than any team or there's no entity. Looks like his internet froze again. <laughs> <laughs> um, while we're waiting for him to come back, Gusty, why don't so, can, oh. Am I back? Yeah, you, I hear back. you. Yeah. I don't know what what's going on there. I have good internet. Anyway. I like, think there's a lot of um, when we're on B Live, it sucks a lot of internet up. And so, I got you. I yeah. got you. Well, what I was saying is, is like Zillow, Facebook, Amazon. None of the nobody can do all the business. And so at that point, what when you finally realize this, and you know that there's no excuses for why you can't do as many as you can handle, now your success is predicated on how much you can handle at one time. You know, like what's your mental capacity? Because some people get like three pendings and four listings and they're shot like they're t like that's 40 hours a week for the rest of their life. Dude, they can't handle anymore. And like I keep about 20 things under contract and about 40 to 50 listings at all times. And I'm always, you know, and, and I'm able to actually go after more business with all that going on while I'm doing podcasts and webinars and videos and all this other stuff. I can just handle a lot. And that's why my that's why I'm able to succeed at the level I can because of my mental capacity. And so everybody's everybody's mental capacity, which I refer to as your cup, is different. Everybody has a different size cup. And so, like you gotta you gotta figure out where that is. But you'll know when the right time to hire an assistant because you'll be overwhelmed with the stuff that you know an administrative person should do. It's holding you back from doing more business. That's the moment that you hire an assistant and whatever those things were that were holding you back, you let your assistant do it to take the pressure off. For me, it was letting her handle all those showing requests and all that stuff. So I got her in there. She took that off of my shoulders. And then we moved to stage two, which was everything else that I, everything else that that I could put on her that would open me up to where all I have. All my only responsibility is, is prospecting, showing property, going to listing appointments, negotiating deals. That's it. Well, and that's awesome. Okay. So let's make sure that we reiterate again, you've got, you keep 40 to 50 listings at all times. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, how many transactions are you doing um, per year? How many people are you helping per year? A uh, hundred. Okay. So a hundred closings a year and one assistant. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I just wanted to kind of reiterate with that. Um, and Dusty, you can even answer this question as well, because um, uh, you've got uh, assistants that help you. And I think that you would add a lot of value to this. Question. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I tell you, the hardest uh, thing I had to do in the real estate business was hire my first part time assistant. And so, um, you know, just letting go and uh, making that decision, you know, allowed me to do more. And so, you know, I started off with a part time assistant. Uh, then it got to the point where I needed somebody full time. And really, I just want to make sure that we were given the best service. And that's what it really boiled down to. And it allowed me to do more uh, closings. And guess what? The more closings help pay for the assistant. So um, and it's just made my life better. And a lot of people know, especially Washington, Birmingham, a lot of people know my uh, Laura Galino on my team. Uh, yes. I, 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 she is fantastic. And I yes. tell everybody like, my life has changed for the better because when Laura entered my life That's and it. I used to be terrible to deal with the last week of the month with closing week because it was just craziness. And then when I actually got a true system and a process together 
like the, the stress was pretty much completely eliminated and it's really just focusing on each deal. And so um, I highly encourage it, you know, especially when you get to that, you know, two, three, four deals um, a month, you know, that's when you really need to think about letting go and putting that into place and thinking of it like a business, you know, what is the dollar value of what you can do and just, you know, be showing houses, closing deals, going on listing appointments. That's more important than ordering a, a termite uh, wood infestation report. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. I know you had a lot to offer there and Laura is fantastic. And uh, um, let's see, we've got a couple other things. OK, so Faith wants to know um, also, Gusty, what's your why about everything? And she wants to know mine as well. So you want to elaborate a little bit on, you know, where yeah. are you right now with your why? Uh, well, I mean, I've got I got three year old and eight month old um, and I've been married for 11 years. So it's all about family for me. Um, I do like taking care of other people. So creating opportunities for other people through real estate, um, you know, my team members helping grow their business. Um, so not only do I help support my family, I'm helping support other families. And so a lot of people depend on, uh, everything that I do. So, you know, having that daily plan, you know, a lot of families depend on everything that we're putting in place. So that is kind of my why, you know, and then I'm also kind of seeing where my dad was a millionaire in the 80s and uh, we lived in a big five bedroom house. And then, you know, we lost everything. And, I, you know, my parents divorced. I lived in a single wide trailer. And uh, so I've seen the best of both worlds. And I'm just truly happy having a roof over my head. So, you know, I think what it really boils down to my why is taking care of my family and taking care of other people and, and, um, you know, I'm just kind of a provider. And to, to answer um, and, and right, and I, we our values align so well um, for anybody who knows the, the two of us. And um, every day um, I wake up just to figure out how to feel accomplished in a day until I know I've helped people. And uh, Ricky, you obviously have that um, in your sense of values as well. And um, that's my why every day. Um, and uh, right now, I am three away from the icon. I have to help myself. <laughs> so I might have to you got to get there. Yeah, I might have to you get there. My phone and do some circle prospecting today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a question for Ricky. So, you know, obviously you've got a baby on the way. How do you feel that that is going to change? your daily, um, you know, prospecting or just daily plan? Not really much. I mean, um, my business is so big, you know, like it's 17 years of me grinding for 15 hours a day. I have so many clients, like I've sold a hundred properties for the last, for since 2014. So this is six years of a hundred properties. So that's right. 600, like that's 600 people. Um, you know, let's say some of those are repeat people, and whatever. that's 500 people, you know, just in the past six years, not to mention probably another hundred or so before that, you know, in my career. And then on top of all the people that, um, I've come in contact with that haven't bought or sold that just know who I am and will use me just, it's so massive and just the brand that I built. And so it's, it's not, I don't wake up in the morning wondering where my next deal is coming from. I, I, I like my job is, is to pursue and to see who I can help and to follow up and to take care of things in, in terms of that. So like business for me is, is uh, to be honest with you, my real estate business is in a really good place to have a child, to be honest with you. And that's why right. I'm able to, do, that's why I'm able to do things like this and make so many videos. Like I'm doing two YouTube videos a day for the past two weeks, two a day. Um, and so like I, I've got so much like, like, you know, I don't know. I, I've just I, I've I put the pieces of the puzzle in place to where I can handle so many things at once. And so adding adding, you know, a daughter into the mix is going to be fun, to be honest with you, because it's going to allow me to be to be honest. It's going to allow me to to kind of like step out of work for a second, which is going to be good for me to kind of like spend time there. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I think to be, I think it's actually going to help me. And like, I think I'll actually grow my business from this because um, it's going to allow me more time to recharge because I'm not going to be glued to my phone or glued to my business mentally as much um, because I am going to spend a lot of time with the family. 
and it's going to allow me to recharge to where the, 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 the lower amount of time that I spend on my business during that time is actually going to be more powerful because I'm going to be more recharged and more motivated and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I you know, and, and I have a great wife. She's amazing. She's going to do such an incredible job. Uh, there. Um, she's going to have a, a, a really nice uh, time. You know, they, they you know, her, her boss gave her a long time after, uh, after the, the birth. And, uh, you know, so, and, and we're in a really good financial spot, you know, which is like, this is the perfect time, you know, for me, like 10 years ago would have been horrible. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Yeah. I was definitely not in a good place 10 years ago, but yeah, now same way with me. all together and <laughs> So, you know, I, I think it'll help. Well, and your wife is absolutely beautiful. And just thank you. I've seen, she's so beautiful. Thank and you. Lucas Berger has a question and I'm not exactly sure. And um, OK, what do you what do you ask is it? Would, I think it's more of a comment. Yeah. And um, is there something that we can answer for you? It says it would be fair to go to one MLS and one association with standard sales contracts and equipment. That way, the big fish and small ponds can compete on an equal playing field. Hey, I, ca I can help answer this. Okay. Um, contact Jeremy Walker at the Alabama Association of Realtors and reach out to him and make the recommendation. That's going to be the best thing. If you want that to happen, then that's exactly where I'd go. Jeremy Walker, at the, he's the CEO of AAR. So I'll make that one easy. Perfect. All right. And Frankie, no, they do not have to be licensed. Um, sometimes it helps if you need them to do certain things that licensed agents need to do, but um, uh, they do not uh, need to be licensed. So one of the things I like behind your head, Ricky, is that get 1% better every day. That is like so Brian Tracy. Um, he brings that home all the time in all of his videos. And mm -hmm. I love that he is still doing videos. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, right? Yes. <laughs> but when you uh, strive to be 1% better every day, that is attainable. And um, over a whole year, um, it, you become so much better. And uh, my dad always uh, gets mad at me for having certain goals that are set because he said, when you reach home, it's disappointing because you could have probably gone way you know, farther. So um, he always says, make your goals to where they're never, they never end. And that's a perfect example of get 1% better every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, with goals and everything, I don't really, I, I make a goal at the beginning of the year and everything, but I don't really focus on it through the year. I'm more focused on my daily actions because like I really can't control the results. And if I start to look at the results, then if I'm not hitting my goal, I could get down on myself. Or if I'm, if I, you know, if it, it's just in like most people make goals they can't, they can't attain. So when they focus on that, then they start to become down. And I really got, I got into that loop of feeling down on myself and frustrated. Why can't I hit my goals? And so I went through this and, and it's, um, it's tough. So I, I like to make really big goals, but I don't, I'm not hard on myself when I don't hit these huge, crazy goals that I have for myself. What I'm hard on myself about is, is when I go to sleep at night that day did I put in as much effort as possible. And if I did see the thing is, is if I wake up December 31st and all I sold was 50 properties, I would be just as happy as if I sold 150 because the amount of effort I put in is the same. I can't control what comes out the other side of my actions. I really can't. Um, but I can control the actions themselves. And so my, my happiness on a daily basis doesn't come from the goals. Of course, as soon, you know, at the end of the year, I look back and I say, yes, but, but, you know, I, you know, that's short lived and now it's back to, okay, you know, I have to put as much effort as I can in today and then whatever happens, happens, you know what I mean? And so that's, that's been really big for me. Well, I, I think that's the key. I think that uh, mm -hmm. we would all agree that um, the effort and the action is the key. And if you stay focused on that, then um, you can't help not meet your goals. Um, so uh, what would you what advice um, do you give today? And I'm sure you've probably done YouTube videos on this recently and um, for, you know, agents who are just starting out. 
I think with new agents, I think the biggest thing is, is that um, I think they put too much weight on the fact that they're a new agent and they have their confidence level is low because they feel like that they're, you know, they can't compete against the more experienced agents and they feel and it's really the opposite. Right. Newer agents should be super confident because not because of their experience in the business, because of the fact that they're here to help people. See, it, see right there, just the fact that you're there to help, you, you knock out a good 90%, 95% of the industry right there, right? You're, you're above the pack. You're, you're ahead of the pack right there. And then to take it a step further, because you're new and you don't have a ton of deals going on, you have tons of time on your hands compared to the experienced agent that you can research the market and see there's always new market information. There's new listings every day. There's new closings. There's new pendings every day. And as a new agent, you have the time to actually stay on top of these market activities every day. Like if you just study the market, uh, like pull up the hot sheet for new listings, close sales, pendings, expires and stuff like that every day, you know, for like 10, 15 minutes, just kind of like scan through it and become familiar with the different properties and what's going on. You're way ahead of the game. And if you actually bring that new market information to the public first, now everybody sees you as an expert because you're giving them information that they haven't heard before about the real estate market. And so if you would take advantage of the fact that you have time to research the market, to pick out great new listings, to put on Facebook and to email out to people and to cold call people about, you know, and let people know recent information about the market that happened today, people are going to be like, wow, this guy's really on top of his game. You know, and so if you can combine those two things, the fact that you you need to have so much confidence in yourself just because of the fact that you want to help people and take advantage of the fact that you have so much time on your hands to research the market to to, to really like become viewed as an expert. It's so big. And then from there, you can just kind of build your way through and start learning the business and stuff like that. But th that's. That's where you need to start. On top of that, who's the first call I would make? Sphere of influence is who I would call first, not to sound salesy, just to see if I can help you. Do you have an agent you would work with? You know, what can I do to help? Okay, I'm here. Let me know. Get their email. That takes you one day to call your sphere, okay? One day. All right, let's go to day two. We're going to call for sale by owners on day two. We're going to help them for free. We want, we want to see where they're moving to, why they're selling. Tell me about the house. We want, to, we want to get into these conversations and say, look, let me just try to help you sell this on your own, right? And then if they throw the towel in two months later, who are they going to list with? If they sell it on their own, who are they going to buy their next one with? Right. You know, if, if their brother wants to sell or buy something, who are they going to refer to? The agent that helped them for nothing. And so there's a lot of things that you can do as a new agent to hit the ground running. But I'm telling you, um, Quintavious Burdett, man, a hundred and six. It's because he is so confident in himself that he is there to n number one, outwork everybody. Like he knows that he's going to outwork everybody. He knows that that's done. But secondly, he's there to help people, you know, and that's literally why he was able to sell a hundred properties and to take, to go a little deeper with how he sold a hundred properties in today's technology world. You can do things 10 times faster than I did when I started. Like I had to look everybody up. I had to paste their addresses in there and look up their phone numbers and then dial it by hand. Now you can just click a few buttons and find thousands of numbers and another button and start dialing them. And, and you can call people. You can you can contact people 10 times faster. And so he was able to sell 100 properties 10 years faster. You know what I mean? Yes. So that though, but he took his work ethic that he probably had already trained in uh, football and being yeah. that's there that 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 effort that he put into that every day and listened to what you had to say and implemented it. So hats off to him for sure. So I have several more questions. And um, Zach um, wants to know um, uh, what are some of your other lead generation techniques outside of hitting the phones? Oh, absolutely nothing. Like everything else is to build brand. You know, social media, you know, Facebook leads are, you know, you know, 50 cents, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. You know, I don't know, but you can find people's phone numbers for three cents. And like Facebook leads are literally random people in your market, just random people that clicked on an ad. And now, boom, you have their contact information. Zillow leads, hundreds of dollars per per 
you know, per random person in your market's contact information. You know, there's nothing better literally than circle prospecting or uh, expireds. Um, but I'll tell you another thing, Quintavious, he made it a point to meet 50 people a week at grocery stores. 50 people a week. He said he sold 15, 15 of those 100 properties he sold from Kroger's. Like he gave Kroger. Huh? I believe it. He gave Kroger's a big shout out because, um, you know, like the, it, like it's just people in your market. You know, like these leads that, 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 that these companies are selling us are just people that are in our market that we could just go meet. Right. You know, and so you have to th you have to really think hard about that, you know, and how that all how that all like comes to be, you know, but I've done a weekly email every single Wednesday since 2007. I'll tell you that much. And that's literally how I built my brand. And that's how all the people in my past continue to know who I am and keep up with the market and keep up with me. And they know that I'm here, you know, to, 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 you know, to outwork everybody to, to make sure they're, you know, whatever's going on with them goes smooth. So. So do you ever leave a voicemail? Every time. Okay. So um, I think that's important. So what do you say on your voicemail? Same thing? Yeah. This is Ricky. Call me back. Because the thing is, is that with the voicemail, you know, chances are low. They're going to call you back. I don't care what kind of secret thing you say that makes people call you back or whatever. But to me, they're not really going to call you back. So, so the way I view voicemails is another channel branding myself. They heard my name. They heard my company. They heard my phone number. You know what I mean? Um, so um, it, it's it's just a form of branding for me. And if they call me back, which happens kind of rarely, but it happens, great. Now I'm on the call. You know, now we're talking. You know. So, but I think view voicemails as more of a branding tool instead of a way to try to entice people to call you. You know, and I think you'll you'll have more success. Um, okay, so um, that's actually a, a really there. Gusty, I lost you, and then I lost you back. It's all good. I came back on. Okay. Oh, so um, let's see. Darius King says, "Ricky, let's make calls together to see who can get the uh, most appointments." I'm learning a lot from your scripts. So um, Darius is one of our awesome agents on Clarence's team, uh, Clarence Graham. So uh, he must be following you and uh, using your scripts. So I love the challenge. Yeah, for sure. And I'll just take it a step further. You know, like appointments aren't really what I'm after. You know, like the appointment might be might be what's needed, but it might not be. See, every situation is different. And this is what separates my content from a lot of content out there is that I'm trying to help agents understand that every situation is different. We got to listen to what's going on and then make a decision of what's best for them. Maybe it's an appointment. Maybe it's not. And so I think agents are blinded by because they've been trained to just get the appointment, get the appointment, get the appointment that that they don't even hear anything else. And it makes them sound salesy because the appointment wasn't the best thing for that client. You know, but now they're trying to create this awkward situation where they're trying to squeeze in there for an appointment that isn't needed. And now we're in a weird thing where that client, if we would if we'd actually listened and backed off and, and heard what they said and created a game plan around their specific situation, now that prospect could have turned into 10 to 20 deals to us over the life of our career through repeat business referrals and referrals of referrals. And, you know, we just lost it because we were going too hard for the appointment. You know, so I think it, I think we need to be careful about trying to convert every lead, trying to get an appointment every call and start. Like, I would rather you make, you know, I would rather you have five really great conversations with people where you listen and, and it took they were really long then to make then to talk to 20 people where you just went through the script really fast, try to set the appointment, you know, and, and didn't really connect. You know what I mean? Well, it is about going and meeting as many people as you can. That's why Quintavious, um, even meeting 50 people a week. Um, mm -hmm. Love that. Love that. And you, you can meet them anywhere at the grocery anywhere. store, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they eat, you know what I'm saying? Like, like right. they cook food. <laughs> so what are you doing on your workshop Monday? Well, it's going to be a, a variety of things. I have three different sessions I'm going to do. I'm going to do one on communication, like how to communicate, how to connect, body language, tone, different ideas behind the connection and the conversion. I'm going to do another one on energy management, 
like how not to get burnout, how not to to feel down about yourself, how to, you know, how, how to how to have a really good attitude behind, you know, behind your purpose and and to really, you know, serve your clients the best. So it's just going to be it's going to be a really super incredible uh, a day, to be honest with you. I mean, not just talking because it's going to be me and Coach Burt, but I mean, it is going to be it's going to be very good. And it's six hours of CEs and lunch. All right. So um, give us that website one more time again. That's at coachbert.com backslash Caruth, my last name. So coachbert.com backslash Caruth and use the coupon code Alabama to save that $200 because it goes down from $299 to $99. Well, um, I just appreciate you so much for being here. And Gusty, do you yeah. have additional questions? Yeah. Uh, you know, a couple of things. What, uh, so what does retirement look like for you? like retirement for me looks like me in like, you know, 30 years trying to figure out how to work even more hours. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. like, I'm all, like so many people are out there trying to like put this work in to figure out how they don't have, how, like they're trying to work so they don't have to work. And I think it's a really horrible strategy. You know, like I could quit now. I could quit anytime I can hang it up. But the thing is, is like, I don't know what I would do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, yeah. so I, I literally see myself in 20, 30 years, like working even harder than I work now, believe it or not. That, that's my outlook. Okay. How are you giving back to your local community? Um, I have a lot of different charities that I, that I give to. Um, and I, I volunteer with different, uh, things like Christmas, Thanksgiving, that kind of deal and, uh, stuff of that nature. Okay. And what would you like? your legacy to be what's that what would you like your legacy to be uh i think i think that i just i was the hardest i was i, I worked harder than anyone and i literally single-handedly reduced the failure rate in the real estate industry i love that that's a good legacy <laughs> yeah so you know we haven't really talked about the zero to diamond coaching program Mm -hmm. Um, I think one of the things that's super unique about that coaching program is it's free. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us a little bit about the zero uh, to diamond coaching program? Sure. It's uh, like you say, it's the first completely free program uh, in the industry. And um, it's, it's a full online course. There's a 90 day action plan. There's a 28 day challenge. There's scripts, there's videos of me making calls. There's tons of value. Like it's, it's the kind of program it's it it's one of the best programs out there. I mean, I don't know, you know, I don't know where I rank with how good the content is or how many people it's helped, but it's way up there. And um not not going to say it's the best cuz I don't know, but you know, because it's free, it gets exposed to so many people and it's able to help so many I have thousands and thousands of uh screenshots of direct messages and emails of people that we're about to have to quit real estate, but they found it or, you know, they're getting listings and just so many testimonials. It's just unreal. It's it's super humbling, to be honest with you, because I never thought I'd be sitting here where I am. But um, and I'm always trying to make it better, trying to tweak it. Um, we do live training, um, you know, twice a month. And uh, I literally just just I'm just giving back to them. I just want to help people because, to be honest, it, it's. With the free thing, I just I realize like there's a lot of legit coaches out there, but there's a lot of scams out there as well um, that are really taking agents for a ride. And uh, it really motivates me when I see that kind of thing to to even go harder with what I'm doing, because if I can if I can just help these agents, because like here's here's the two problems with the industry. Real estate, uh, like overpriced real estate coaching that teaches agents how to high pressure people, you know, in, in awkward situations and buyer leads that cost too much for random people in your market. That's the two reasons why I think a lot of agents fail because they can't afford coaching, but they get it anyway because they think they have to. And they buy leads for random people in their market when they don't have to, but they think they have to. And so they get backed into a corner and feel like they have to get coaching and they have to buy leads and they can't afford either one, but they feel like they have to. So they just go all in. And then after several months, they can't afford anything. You have to go back to the other job. 
You know, whereas if you would just listen to what I'm saying, I have free coaching. I'm going to show you how to get leads for three cents a piece, unlimited, targeted property owners that own the type of property you want to sell. We're not going to high pressure them. We're there to help them. You know what I'm saying? No. So but they got to work. <laughs> you got to put in the efforts, though. Um, you, you know, they have to put in the efforts, though. A lot of That's people will not put in the effort. You know, like I have agents say, you know, hey, I, you know, I need this and all that. And I'm like, I can't teach work ethic. You know, you, you got to want, you got to want what you say you want. Yes. You know, I, I can't teach that. Yeah. Hey, what, what are some of the technology pieces that you use? The biggest one I use is Red X. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, there, there's competitors of Red X. There's Espresso Agent, there's Mojo, there's Vulcan, there's different programs. I've used all of them and I found Red X to have the best data. Um, and then they have a dialer. So boom, I use constant contact to send my weekly email. Boom. I don't have a CRM. Like I don't have one. I've never had one. Um, I know a lot of people freak out when I say that, but I don't have a CRM. I don't have a, you know, when I say I don't have a CRM, I don't have a team and all this stuff. People really start to <laughs> wonder what's going on here. But um, I think everything works. You just have to kind of try to figure out what works for you. And, and, just, and, then, and then from there, once you find something that you kind of get a little traction with, it's like, OK, now let's take what we're doing and try to tweak it as we go to become more and more efficient and try new things, see what works, see what doesn't work and just continue growing, you know, and continue building and just continue trying to be one percent better, you know, trying to be efficient. I think efficiency, I think I think effort you put in and efficiency and, and trying to be more and more efficient are the are the most important two things. Yeah. Most people programs don't use them anyway. So well, that's what's that now? I said most people who have CRMs don't use them anyway. So Oh, that's the next thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean it's so much work to like, you know, keep it organized, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, you know, I always say, you know, whenever, whenever, you know, you, you know, most agents are sitting around organizing their CRM and all that stuff while I'm out here selling properties. <laughs> so, well, um, Gusty and I just appreciate you so much for being here and our time. Enjoyed it. Fortunately, uh, we could ask you a ton more questions, but um, I hope that everyone will um, get a ticket to see Ricky on Monday in Birmingham and uh, go through the workshop. Um, we just thank you for your time. We know how valuable it is. And uh, if we can do anything for you at all, um, definitely let us know. We're always happy to support. We all have the same goals and it's to see our industry do well and be more professional and uh, to, to serve and help people. So. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me and uh, we'll do it again. Sure. Yeah, and how sure. Can you get in touch with you, Ricky. Uh, the best way I answer every single Instagram DM that that's literally the best way to just DM me there. That's the best way to cut to communicate with me because I answer them every day. And that's the uh, really the only place that I really do that. Emails can get lost and, you know, different, you know, Facebook messages and stuff, but the DMs on Instagram, I'm looking at those every day. So that's really the best place. If you really need something, then I'm happy to help. Hey, Jenny, can I tell about next week who we're uh, interviewing? Absolutely. So I, I want everybody, you know, we, we've got some viewers on now and I know a bunch of people are going to be uh, reviewing uh, this uh, video and Ricky again, thank you for that. Um, I've really enjoyed the, uh, the conversation next every week at 930 a.m. Central Time. We're going to be interviewing people from all across the country. And next week, we've got a special guest, a friend of mine out of Atlanta, Michelle Hume. She's one of the top team, uh, team leaders in the Atlanta area. So that's going to be next week, next Thursday, 930 a.m. Central Time. So go ahead and mark your calendars. Thanks so much for taking uh, your time as you are a viewer to, to watch this and to learn. And uh, my greatest hope is that you implement what he says and have great success with it. So thanks again for watching and thank you, Ricky and Gusty. Thanks, guys. See you later.